Hi, I'm Olivia, and joined with me in the studio today is Jerry Chow, the director of all of IBM Quantum Hardware, to discuss the brand new IBM quantum computer, Osprey. Osprey is the largest quantum computer that has ever been built to date. And I'm going to be sitting down with him to ask some questions about what is Osprey? How did we engineer it? And at the end, I'm going to be asking him at this point, is quantum computing simply just an engineering problem? So joining me in the studio today is Dr. Jerry Chow, IBM Fellow and Director of IBM Hardware. And so I'm going to be asking Jerry a couple questions that I came up with that I'm interested in, but also uh, questions that the community and people who keep messaging me on Twitter and LinkedIn have asked about the new Osprey device. Um, so maybe just to get started, Jerry, what is Osprey and why is it significant? Yeah, so uh, well, Osprey is our latest uh, generation of, of quantum processor. Uh, it's 433 qubits. Uh, these are superconducting transmon qubits, right? And um, uh, it's arranged still in our, our heavy, hex, heavy hexagonal uh, uh, architecture. Um, and really it's significant because it's pushing the limits of what we can do in terms of scale yeah. with regards to quantum processors. And it is the largest quantum processor to date. That's right, it's the largest quantum processor to date. Um, it's fully uh, connected between all those 433 qubits. Um, it has the capability of addressing every one of those qubits. So yes. Actually, that was one of my other questions, so maybe I'll just go off that right now. Yeah. How do we communicate to every single qubit on the processor individually? Yeah, yeah, so that's a really great question. It's um, Osprey really actually follows on the heels of Eagle with a lot of the underlying uh, technologies. And uh, Eagle is the Eagle 127 is the one that, That's right, chip. 127 qubit chips that we, we released last year. Um, but but the, the, the core technology breakthrough with, with Eagle and Osprey really is this uh, concept of multi-level wiring. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past when we had uh, qubit chips that are on a single plane, you often need to bring in wire bonds and wires that all come from the periphery. Yeah. But as you increase the number of qubits, that just becomes impossible, right? Yeah. And uh, so the, the, the technical advances with Eagle and then also that we pushed even further with Osprey is to have multiple layers embedded in another chip that allows us to bring the signals to wherever we want and to address the qubits individually. Cool. Um, so I think you answered this already, but just in case people didn't catch it, what type of qubits does Osprey use? Yeah, so Osprey uses um, superconducting transmon qubits. Uh, within our IBM quantum architecture, it, it's they're typically uh, single Joseph's injunction qubits, so mm -hmm. they're not uh, they're not tunable by any sense. The, yep. the qubits themselves, they once we make them in fab, they're fixed in their in their frequencies. Yep. Cool. Um, and besides the the qubit number, because we already said Eagle had 127, Osprey is over three times that size. What are the differences between Eagle and Osprey? Yeah, yeah so with, um, with Osprey, uh, again, uses a lot of that core technology that, that, uh, that we have with multi-level wiring. But in order to actually scale to 400 plus qubits, it requires a lot more um, care in terms of the layout, how you actually arrange all the different um, wires in, in, in the uh, actual um, device to, mm -hmm. to, to push to that scale. Um, but also we saw Osprey as, as overcoming a lot of other technological hurdles that are needed to make a 400 qubit system. So there's also, the, there's also um, developments in terms of how we actually wire and, 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 and build a system to actually talk to the uh, Osprey processor. So this is using uh, microwave flex cables that actually work at uh, uh, cryogenic temperatures. And this replaces the sort of coaxial cables that people might have seen, um, you know, historically inside the uh, quantum chandelier, for example. Right. So it's not really just all about the processor itself. It's about all the other things that go in that, and around the processor. That's right. All the things that go around the processor. And also, basically, how do you handle uh, a system of 400 qubits in, in size? Yeah. Uh, something I might, might, might also have seen is that the chip is actually quite large. And it even, is bigger, yeah. even for it to, to actually function when you cool it down and not for it to just blow up, a lot of engineering went into that too. Mm -hmm. Cooling power? 
Uh, cooling power, making sure that the fridges are able to handle all the amount of uh, infrastructure that we need for 400 qubits. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, we're going to be uh, testing even beyond that for Condor next year. Right. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> what was the most challenging part, do you think, in going from Eagle to Osprey? I know we just listed a few different things that you had to focus on, but what was the hardest part? Um, well, I mean, I, I think that, you know, it's, it's uh, certainly aspects of how it all comes together, right? Yeah. Uh, it's hard to point to exactly one particular thing in this case, um, uh, but I'd say that, and you know, in fact, we're still getting our feet wet with a lot of the characterization of Osprey right now, and so there's still, you know, remains to be seen. And I think that there's going to be something like, how do you actually bring up 400 plus qubits yeah. in a reasonable amount of time that the team is right now working on, uh, and I think that's going to be actually, uh, it is tremendously challenging, and they're they're on it, but also I think something that's going to be teaching us a lot for how we do these systems uh, in the long run. That's actually my next question. So we're getting to it <laughs> pretty quickly, actually. So Condor is going to be the processor that has over a thousand qubits. Mm -hmm. What have we learned from Osprey and the calibrations and all the other controls that went into Osprey that are going to enable us to be able to build Condor? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, there again, I think it's sort of the uh, with Condor, the idea is we want to push the limits of this technology, right? Yeah. And uh, with most of these different birds, year after year, we're trying to, to, to learn something new, right? And with Condor, we really think that we're going to be at the limits of what's possible from a monolithic architecture, so with just a single chip device. Yeah. Right, and so, uh, you know, more than two times the number of qubits on Osprey, right, than Osprey. Which was already a yeah, huge which achievement. Yeah, already a huge <laughs> achievement. And so, uh, just the size of the the circuit board to hold it, just the num total number of connectors. You you know, we already mentioned things like cooling power that we might need in the fridge. We're gonna see basically how this all works out to the max. Yeah. Right. And um, you know, that is going to help us inform us further for the rest of our roadmap looking ahead. Yep. So once we have reached, like you were saying, the the edge of the monolithic engineering that we can achieve, then we start doing interconnects. Interconnects and um, and uh, uh, and modular frameworks for how we're gonna scale. Moving on to maybe a different sort of question, um, a little bit of backstory here. So I was speaking to some of my physics friends mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, and they're not quantum computing friends, they're just general physicists. Um, and they you know, asked me a lot about quantum computing. Maybe they're not totally convinced by it at this point. And so I said, you know, what would convince you? And uh, basically their summary was, well, I would want to know that quantum computing is really just an engineering problem. How could we comment on that from what we've learned from building Osprey? That's, that's not an a uncommon uh, question or statement. Yeah. Um, I think especially with any sort of technology development, that sort of shift from a research to engineering phase right, is, is, is pretty common. Um, but I'd say that in, in, in um, IBM Quantum, we've been actually approaching it quite differently. And this really sort of pushes back to even the first uh, realization of the, the quantum experience and putting something on the cloud, where we're really trying to do a bunch of these different things all at once. Yeah. Um, where, you know, we're doing research, we're doing development and engineering, right, towards a product, and we're even putting that product out for users to access. Well ahead of maybe when it's going to be completely finished, right, and that all the research is done, because it all needs to happen at the same time. So you end up having these different cycles and these waves, right? Now I like to call this um, agile hardware development, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're basically running through this whole life cycle of research, development, and product yeah. multiple times, but more quickly in sprints. So it's not completely an engineering problem. It's not completely <laughs> an engineering problem. We're certainly, especially with these different birds, tackling critical engineering problems that we know are there for how to scale. Right. But then at the same time, we're continuing to work on you know, some of those fundamental things to improve coherence, improve quality of the underlying devices, and those feed back in. Right? Yeah. And then that comes into the next generation and the next generation and so forth. Yeah, I think maybe a misconception that people have is that there are theoretical physics questions and engineering questions, but I think those are actually much more closely correlated yeah, than people think. Yes. Another question I have for you, and this I think is an incredibly powerful statement that maybe we didn't get to address too much during the summit. But there's actually a second Osprey 
Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, that's right. I mean, I, I touched on her very briefly, but like in, in basically this, the amount of time that it took to test one Osprey, we were already working on a, on a, on a mod modification and a different generation of Osprey. Um, where that one allowed us to already push on um, some of the quality benefits like improved coherence times. And so uh, last year we had already de debuted some of this with um, our Falcon processors, mm -hmm. which are 27 qubits, and we had a 3x improvement in coherence on the Falcon R8 uh, generation. That quickly got fed into um, Eagle. So then with Eagle, we had our third revision of Eagle, which also has the, that, that, that benefit. Uh, in fact, there's a new device that just went online called uh, Sherbrooke, which has oh, yeah, 300 plus I heard that one's really good. Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> Um, and um, and you know we were quickly able to also you know have that as part of our Osprey exploration that you know we're pretty confident that we'll get that kind of um, coherence benefit on 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 the Osprey processors that we're building now. Yeah, that makes sense. I think for people maybe who don't have a lot of lab experience, this is an incredible statement and testament to the hard work that the team has been doing, right? Because I think in graduate school, we often have hero devices, right? A hero device, uh, for those who are maybe not familiar with the term, is a device that you build and you cool it down or you put it in the experimental setup and you basically take data on it forever because it's so great. But maybe if you try to reproduce it, that doesn't work. <laughs> so pretty much you just take data on it until it dies or your advisor says, okay, for real, we have to move on. And Osprey is not that at all. No, absolutely not. Because we have this whole, um, effectively this pipeline of building up these devices. You know, we, we also, you know, in terms of the actual process, we build these and screen them and we do a lot of sort of pre-checks before they ever go and see the, the, the light of a, of, a, uh, of a deployment system, right? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, you bring up the whole hero device and that's, <laughs> That's very much like, you know, my, certainly my graduate uh, student experience too, where every single chip that you had, <laughs> you didn't want to mess up, mess it up, right? Right. And, uh, it would be back to fab and back to... Yeah, you lose uh, months. You lose months, right? <laughs> yeah. I can speak from experience there. Um, okay, one last question I have for you is, when you were back in graduate school, working with these, you know, precious hero devices, did you ever think we would build a 433 <laughs> qubit processor. Uh, I would certainly say that uh, we've progressed a lot further than I would have imagined. Me too. Right. So I mean, uh, back to that hero concept, right? We were happy to be able to have just two qubits. Yeah. And even there, it was like, you know, months of work to try to get something just to show uh, some of the effects that we wanted. And today, we're like you know, really ma making these in, 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 in some, at some scale, right, in terms of the numbers in order to, 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 to push out 400 and eventually 1,000 and this huge roadmap that we have uh, ahead of us. Yeah, I remember when I first joined IBM two, three years ago at this point, it was like right before you guys published the first roadmap and I saw it and I was so intimidated. I was like, oh my gosh, are we really doing all of that? And then we've done it every single year and it's just been so impressive and awesome to, to be here and be part of it. It's, it's really an exciting time and you know the team is um, you know tremendously engaged and, and um, part of this journey to you know really enable the world with quantum. Thank you so much for being here Jerry. Thanks um, Olivia for really having Really appreciate me. it. I think we have asked uh, probably maybe a little bit <laughs> more questions than I intended but I appreciate you answering all of them and very thoroughly and yeah uh, it's a really exciting time like you said. Thanks Olivia.